for fleeing. The most fluffiest and non-gluggy rice that I know. So I'm going to get started. I have already rinsed my um, rice, so hang on, I'll just go back. Sorry. So we won't do that. You have more rice. I'm watching. So I rinse the rice and it's going into our Fermo mix. I'm going to be placing 900 grams of water. Mm -hmm. And I've fallen short. I just need to add more water. Nine hundred grams. Mm -hmm. Pop the simmering basket back into the thermomix. And then I'm pouring over a teaspoon of peanut oil over the rice, a bit of flavour, and then simply just popping on my lid and my measuring cup. And as I said, because it's already pre-built in, it is going to cook at 15 minutes at 100 degrees on speed four. And then we'll, it'll be a, a simple matter of popping together that sushi salad and it'll be done. So I'll head back over to Sarah and I'll come back when my rice is cooked to show you. So we'd love to know if anyone else is using the rice cooker mode either within a recipe or if you're using it via the manual, using the actual modes within the Thermomix screen when you swipe across to the left and all your modes come up. You can obviously cook your rice directly in the Thermomix bowl as well without the need of your simmering basket. So would love to know if you're using that. Type your uh, responses in the chat. Uh, otherwise, we're going to head across to Jane and she's got a couple of things she's going to get started for us. But um, let's go, Jane. Unmute myself first so you can hear me all tonight. I'm, I'm really rolling well tonight, everyone. Sorry. Um, but trust me, the Fermi, the Fermi does the work for me, which is really nice. So even when you're having one of these days, it all, all works out. I'm actually doing a chicken pozzola tonight, which is using the sensor because it's a current extra host reward we get in August. But I'm also doing some caramels. So I'm going to actually just get started with my caramels first because my sauce has still got five minutes here. So I'm just throwing the team out as well. Um, I'm going to use the sugar mode for my caramels. So one of the other things I love, two bowls. So when you do need something, something happens, you can keep going. Let's get started. Which, of course, two bowls is the gift with purchase at the minute, whether you're straight up purchasing a Thermomix or you are trading up from a TM31 or a TM5. Um, or not the TM31, it's a slightly different offer. So reach out to your consultant if you want to know more info about that. But the TM5 receives the spare bowl blade and lid set and a $200 Woolworths voucher, as does any new customer who is just investing in a thermic from the get-go. So quite a lot of value there at the minute. And as James just displayed, it's pretty easy to whip between two bowls. So for the sugar mode, I'm... You do have to make sure you're accurate with the sugar mode so that you're actually getting the right ingredients that uses the sugar stages. I've just added some raw sugar, some water, and I'm just putting in some cream. I love these because they are super easy to, to um, whip up. It's often things that you've got in the fridge already. And they're pretty impressive to be able to take when you need to just have something a bit special and a bit different. 30 minutes, you're out the door and you're all ready for it. As you can tell, I was ready for chicken first, as was the team. So let's uh, uh, just adding some butter, and then we're going to put these on. These are a 
great little gift at Christmas too. If you just want to give someone like yeah. a party favour type thing or, you know, put it into a nice fancy silicon mould and give them a whole tray if you want to be a bit bougie. So plenty of options, but it's definitely time to start thinking about hamper ideas for Christmas because I think we're down to about eight Fridays. So if that doesn't freak any. Don't say that. Okay. With your sugar mode, you'll often notice it, it. this is an exclusive mode to the TM6. You use your splash guard on top. It will direct you to do that in your recipe, which I will put in the comments. That is all we need to do. So that's on now, and that's going to cook for 25 minutes. I'm going to finish my sauce off for five minutes, and I'll get back and show you the chicken that you're really waiting to see. Too easy. While we're waiting for that to happen, we'll jump over to Lyndall and I think she's got another tasty treat for us to sample. We're big on the old desserts here in Team Elevate. Off you go, Lyndall. Hi, everyone. This is also another good um, hamper um, hamper uh, add, add, add in for your hampers. I was actually, what inspired me, I went to a market down at Yarra Glen on the weekend um, and they had um, quite a few different curds. And I thought how easy it is to make lemon curd in the thermomix, but there is also you can make passion fruit curd, but I'm actually tonight going to make a berry curd. Now, just back to Jane. Um, Jane, caramel is so easy and it's easy to make um, dairy-free. So reach out if you need dairy-free because I do dairy-free caramels, um, being that you can make your own um, condensed milk in the thermomix too. So to, for another gift, so we're doing a um, berry, berry curd. So this is a really easy one. It's using the thickener, uh, thickening mode on the um, TM6, which is just on your TM6. So pretty much all we have to do here is I'm making a half serve because this recipe is you can double it or you can half it. So that's easy. And I'm going to um, virtually add everything in. So I'm going to add some sugar. I like using raw sugar. Um, since having my Thermomix, I only buy the one sugar now. One sugar does everything <laughs> um, from golden syrup to... Um, Got uh, icing sugar to caster sugar, so that is amazing. Who who's used um their um TM six to make um icing sugar or caster sugar? Yeah, there's a few people. Yep, fantastic. Um, and also too, who has ever made berry curd? I'd love to know because it's something that I've never made before, and I've never think thought of making it. I've heard of the passion fruit curd, and I've heard of lime curd. Um and lemon curd, but I haven't actually heard of berry curd. Um, so tell me in the chat who has actually made um, a different a variation on lemon curd. So I'll pop the butter in. Now we do the lime juice. Now um, I was very lucky tonight that um, one of my actually Thermix customers around the corner has a lime tree. So I didn't have to use my $200 um, voucher, but if you get a Thermix, you can use your $200 voucher from Woolies to buy some limes. Um, I went to my um, friends and got some. So then we just do the egg. So especially berry, a few berries, um, egg, butter, sugar, and lime juice. And it's so simple. All you do is then you insert everything and then it takes you straight to the... Um, to the thickened screen, which you can do manually, but obviously I'm doing a guided recipe, so it's actually all built in. And then it's heating to eight, it's going to heat to 80, and it's going to take 10 minutes. And all I have to do is put the thickened mode on like that, and it's away. So easy. And then you come back in 10 minutes, you pop it in your sterilized jars that you've sterilized in your Varoma, and you bottle it up and put it in the fridge for um, if you're going to make, you know, any, like a berry tart or my husband's, um, because I've made a sample, my husband's have been having it on some post. Um, or you pop it in little jars, which I'm going to show you a bit later on. I've made one here and I'll show you the consistency, but I'll let this one cook and we're going to throw you back to Deb. Uh, it's me again. But I've still got seven minutes on my rice, so it's still cooking. So we've got a little bit of time. We might pop over to Kaz and she's going to show one of the actual manual modes when you swipe across and how that works. Off you go, Kaz. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so my kids and myself love hard-boiled eggs. 
or soft boiled eggs, like curried eggs in your sandwiches. So one of my favorite modes, probably second to the cleaning mode, uh, would be our egg boiler mode. So all we do is swipe across to our mode screen. And I have my egg boiler mode in my second row because it is one of my most commonly used modes. Uh, you can customize your mode screen for things that you use most often at the top and things that you don't use very often down the bottom too. So it makes it really easy. Just like moving your apps around on your phone, you can make things where you would like them. All righty So in each of the modes, you've got a little bit of a blurb telling you what each mode's about. So if we click on the little I at the top, it'll tell us exactly what to do. So you don't have to remember how to do it exactly. But it tells us to use... Two, add two to six eggs direct from the fridge. Now, my eggs, they're from the chooks. They go straight to the pantry. Um, so for mine, I actually use a slightly different setting, but literally in the bottom of your bowl, you're popping your eggs in and around the blades there. So I'm going to do six because these are going to get demolished in no time. Oh, yeah. So just in the bottom like that. And then depending on what you want in your hardboard or, or softboard eggs for, you can look down the list and it does explain to you what they classify as soft, medium, in and hard and anywhere in between. So because I'm using eggs from the pantry, not the fridge, I actually um, go one less so that I'm not getting them overcooked. Um, but it does tell us to add water up to the litre mark. So I've just got some water here that I'm just going to add up to that one litre marker on the side of the bowl which is really easy to see on the back side of your bowl while you're filling and i want my eggs medium so i'm actually going to use medium soft because mine aren't so cold out of the fridge as well and pop our measuring cup in and you just turn the dial around to the setting you'd like and that's it could not be any easier so for my medium soft 10 minutes and they're done you can go have a shower, go bathe the kids, and it will chime when it's finished. And then you just need to rinse them under cold water just to stop that cooking process and could not be any easier. And if we have time at the end, I might show you how to peel the eggs with the blade peeler cover too. As I'm just laughing because uh, another previous modes class, I did the eggs and my husband stole them. Now, he's behind me tonight preparing his lunch for tomorrow, and he want, he's now trying to steal my tuna. So he's a serial pest in these classes. But he, when you mention <laughs> the eggs, he goes, hmm, now I want those eggs. They were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> They're perfect every time, aren't they, Deb? Absolutely. The uh, eggs are a good one. Not. I love, too, that, like, literally you pop them in and the blades aren't staring. So, no. like, how easy... You know, if you've just got some little homegrown eggs, you can pop a couple more in, just adjust your timings to suit. Um, but, of course, there's multiple ways to do your eggs. You could be putting them in your simmering basket. You could also be cooking them in the Varoma up the top. So, you know, a lot more uses for that Varoma than you could possibly think. And Lyndall touched on the fact earlier that you could also use your Varoma for steaming and sterilising your jars and things like that for your lemon curds, but any other sort of gift as well. I use it for sterilising to make my cordials and all that sort of stuff as well. So um, it's really handy for that using your Verona. So um, we're going to continue on. So Jane, whereabouts? You're ready to layer up your chicken and have a chat about the sense? I think I am. <laughs> okay. This, I will come up as close as I can. This is the Thermomix sensor. It is amazing. Because it does give me the confidence to cook different things like uh, meat and make sure that I've actually cooked them through, particularly on the night that I'm having tonight, um, make sure everyone's still safe. But you can also use it for your breads and cakes and things. So the part that I'm not using tonight is the bit down the bottom that actually goes onto the edge of your cake tin and you can stick it through. And what I love is that it connects us straight to my TM6. So this is the probe I'm going to use for my chicken got the sauce ready um what was also really cool i was able to just use the host reward battery seal container to cook my chicken in tonight so that it's going to be ready for me to seal up and either put in the freezer or the fridge 
for dinner on another night. So I'm just going to release that there. It's an exclusive one that's only available as a host reward for people. You can't get this one in the mix shop. Um, I'll go through more around how it is after because I just want to get this chicken in. So I'm going to just put my sensor probe into the end. Um, what I also love is they always give you a little video on your screen if you've got your TM6 on where to put it in. You're just putting it into the thickest part of your meat. I'm going to shove that in there. You can see I hold that up, sticking out the end there. So I am going to just pull my sauce over the top. So the sensor will do things like uh, meat, um, including all your fish, uh, your red meats, your white meats. It will do cakes. It will do bread rolls. Uh, there are lots of recipes exclusively on Cookie Do, but you can also use it through your Thermomix and choose what you're doing and what you're going to cook. And it takes the guesswork out of what you're going to make because it makes sure that you cook it the way that you would like it and even gives you your resting time for things like meat that I'm not so good with. So it just gives you that fail-safe way of being able to keep cooking for your family or friends. I love it at Christmas time and things when we actually cook a big part of meat and so that I know that I've got all the right temperature on, resting time right, that everyone can enjoy it. Uh, I've just got some cheese that I'm going to put over with the sauce. The chicken just had some oregano and some lemon peel that we've blitzed up before. And we've got some Edam cheese to go over the top. This is a recipe I haven't actually used before. It was um, recommended by um, customer because that's what they'd been using. And I thought it was a great way to showcase how easy it is to do something new with the sensor. On my screen here, I've got the option of monitoring it with the sensor. So I'm gonna just select that instead of setting the timer. Push next. I'm gonna just bring you up nice and close, hopefully, and just show you how, da -da, maybe, can anyone see that? Or am I too screwy? Little to the left, Jane. That's it. Perfect. So that is going to then work out. At the moment, it's chosen it to do it medium well and it will estimate that off. I'm going to throw that into the oven and it's going to do all that work for me. What I love about the sensor too is when it's ready, it notifies me on my Thermomix so that it tells me it's done and I don't have to set any other timers. So I'm going to throw that in the oven and we'll get going. The great thing about the sensor too is that that chime and alarm that it has now set on Jane's Thermomix sounds different than the actual finished chime of a recipe. So Jane also has the caramels on the go the minute she removes that bowl and puts the caramel bowl back on. So then it will sound different. So you don't actually get them all mixed up. It's all in there as one thing. The sensor video shows you where to insert it on the probe. You just make sure your probe's not touching your dish at all so it's just within the meat and then you just sit back because it's going to tell you exactly what to do just like the thermix does so and as jane pointed out it also sits on the side of your tin but if you're hosting a demo at the moment and you have a guest purchase at your demo for a very limited time and it's not the entirety of this month it is literally till they run out we had around 1500 of them and demos have been consequently booked and they are heading out. So um, if that is something that interests you, make sure you reach out to your consultant Quick Smart to potentially try and get your hands on one of those. So Deb, how are you going over there? Yes, my rice is cooked. So it's going to be a bit hard to see, but I don't know where you can see that. It's lovely, cooked beautiful to perfection. And I... It, does have to sit aside now to cool. So what I'm going to do is pop it straight into the fridge to help it cool along so we can get along with the rest, rest of the recipe. So I'll just pop it in the fridge and give the bowl a quick rinse there and then I'll be right to keep going, I think, or wherever we're up to next, okay? So, well, we might see if Madeline is managed to find her way in and we will jump across... Madeline, do you have any sound yet, love? Yes, can you hear me? Oh, ah, now we've got you. 
It's the only first time ever I've plugged it in, it just didn't want to work, but never mind. Okay, so I'm highlighting dough mode, which is my favourite mode because I've been making my own bread for 46 years and to not have to stand there, you know, kneading and rolling for eight minutes to get this dough ready to rise is a boom for me. I don't have that much, many minutes to stand around. So we're making these white bread rolls. So... We've uh, lined my parchment, uh, my trays with parchment already. And I've greased the bowl, ready to put my dough in when it's ready. So now we're adding, this is in ounces. So that's the thing. If you pick a recipe from another country that still uses imperial measurements, the Thermomix on cookie dough automatically changes scales. So we're putting in 23 ounces. The beauty is you just pour it in till it says 23 on the screen. You don't have to think about it. It literally takes that guesswork out. And it's also got one to two teaspoons of salt in there and two teaspoons of sugar. And now I'm putting one and a half teaspoons of um, yeast. Next, we're going to put our lid on. And it's going to uh, mix for five seconds. Great thing about this recipe is that you are literally crumbling that butter through that flour mix uh, and making it like that original sort of scone texture and then you're popping in cold milk. So you don't need you don't to, have to get the fingers all dirty. Yeah. So no, two and a half ounces of butter. Right, so. And now I'm pushing turbo three times and that will crush that butter for us. <laughs> right, now we're adding 14 ounces of whole milk. I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's our butter all mixed in there. It's all the texture of a nice flour. You can't even see the butter in there at all. So that's much better than dirtying your fingers trying to knead it in and get the lumps out. Oh, I how long it would take you to rub that in traditional style. Oh, forever. So now we're adding 14 ounces of whole milk. And one large egg. This is the uh, first bread I've made where it has eggs in it. Uh, my bread mix doesn't usually have that. That's going to mix for 15 seconds. Good. And now it's going to knead for four minutes. That's it. That's kneading, and I can just do something else while it's doing that. So do you want to go off to somebody else for four minutes, Sarah? No, do you want to show people, Madeline, how to shape them? You oh, yeah. Them so they're on the Madeline yep. was so industrious today. She has one. Ready to go. Look at that. The power of ha 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 ha. Something I have I've made. I've three batches today. <laughs> and have rolls coming at my ears. Right. So I'm just going to spread. I'll just lower this so you can see. Right. So I'll put this on here. Normally, once this is kneaded, you let it sit for two hours. So I've had this one neat, um, sitting near the central heating for about an hour and a half. Right. So all I'm going to do is stretch it out a little bit, roll it into a log. Can you see that? Yeah. And I'm going to cut it into 12 pieces. Right. Right. And you can see the mat Madeline has there. That's the large uh, thermo mix mat. 
that is one of the host rewards that you can access. Here's the little tools from the mix shop of Britain for cutting your dough because you don't want to use anything sharp on your mat. Right. Now to shape these rolls, I learned from a baker. So you just get it, put your hands in the palm flat and you're squeezing out any bubbles, doing a circular motion. Then gradually just go around like that. And then you have a perfectly smooth top and these little seam underneath. So we'll just keep doing that. You can do whatever shape. The recipe actually wants some um, sausage uh, rolls for like sausages and things. I'll just quickly show you who's has one a nice little fancy roll. Do a really long sausage. Can you see that? Take this end round and tuck it in. And you tuck that one underneath. And then you get a nice little knot roll. So if you have friends over for barbie, these look really fancy. They think you're really clever. And they're so easy to make. Madeline, could you do that one more time, please? Oh, yep. Okay. I'll do it on this one. It's going to roll it out to a longer sausage shape. Notice okay. all the consultants are leaning in. Now, look, now you take that one around and tuck it in the hole of the back where my thumb was, and you get the bottom, and you tuck that in that little hole as well. Can you see the little knot shape? Sure can. Thanks for that handy little tip. Yeah, it's nice. All of us nice have just picked up that as well. Nice to have a different shape for a change. And with these rolls, if you want to make them cheese rolls, you can just sort of sprinkle some cheese on it when they finish their rise because these will have another rise time of about, I think it's about an hour, but these will be a lot quicker because of the central heating. But I've got some already finished to show you. That was from my first batch this morning. So... This is just about finished now. Right. Would have been a what treat if we hadn't got Madeline on tonight after she's made three batches of rolls for us. As well as going to grandparents' day at school. So it's been a busy day. <laughs> so That's this... the power of what the Thermomix can help you with. Fancy making that otherwise without. I wouldn't have done three if I'd had to do it manually. I'll tell you what. <laughs> right. So, right. So there's our dough, all beautifully kneaded. So this now goes into a bowl where it will sit for a couple of hours to doubles in size. That depends though on your room. Like if I was making this in the morning, I have beautiful sun coming in my back door. So I just sit it on the floor in front of the window and it's beautiful. So, and then sometimes you've got dough that you can't get out. Just put that back with the lid on and put it on speed 10 for about four seconds. It'll throw the rest of the dough out to the side. So you're not wasting any of that dough. So that I'll just put some glad wrap on that and let that sit for a couple of hours. And do you want to see the finished result? Or we'll do that later. We'll come back to that one. Okay. Um, um, just, Deb, are you ready to keep going with the sushi salad? Just another tip around bread, Sarah that if you wanted to do one at a night, you can actually pop it in the fridge for a slow rise as well. So that's just one thing I've learned since being a consultant. So just pop it in the fridge. We'll do a slow rise so you can actually then cook them in the morning. And the other thing, coming into summer and the warm spring weather, pop it in your car. <laughs> and it, yeah, if you can have that fine, and you, um, it's, a great, um, it's a great environment for raising bread. <laughs> you might often come to the post office with me. Yep. <laughs> I can drive across across Geelong, yep, goes in the boot, gets the sun through the back windscreen on the boot in the wagon, and off we go. Yep, bread dough comes for a ride. <laughs> Righto, Deb, off you all go. Right. Yep, back to me. Now, I just wanted to, because I've just cleaned and rinsed my bowl, so you all know that you can simply jump out of your recipe just by going into your home and then scrolling across and washing your bowl. So, and then you can then keep going with your recipe. And what it'll do, it'll keep you where you are in your recipe by showing you that little notebook, cookbook, and you press back on that and you're back to where you were in that recipe. So just another little tip 
So I'm going to be adding in my shallots and onions without the green bowl. I'll be eating that. Two carrots, which I've chopped into just quarter pieces because you don't want to overwork your blades by popping in a whole carrot. And then I'm going to pop that my lid and measuring cup back on and three seconds at speed six to chop my cup. And I'm going to transfer that in to my serving bowl with the rice, but I'll just show you that how it grated that carrot quickly and easily. I'll just and nice and fine. Nice and fine. And then I'm going to simply then, I'll just grab my rice out of the fridge and then I'm just going to pop it all together. So this is a really handy one to make even the day before. So you can literally assemble this. The flavours just keep intensifying. So it's a really lovely one to pre-prepare. It's a great one to make the night before and then you've got it for work, lunches, et cetera, or salad, picnic, dinner the next night. Really good, easy one to prep in advance. Yeah. Sorry, Sarah, we love this. So we often, well, I used to do bush kinder and this was a favourite that I used to take out every day for lunch because it's quick and easy and they loved it. So then when I told them tomorrow that I was um, bringing sushi salad, they were wrapped. So then I'm just going to place a large bowl on top of my uh, mixing bowl and I'm going to add in my tuna, which I might just put straight into my rice because that you can adjust the tuna to your taste. You can put in as much as you like. Oh, I better go back because I haven't. And then I'm going to add in my mirum. Forget which one now is my mirum. My mirum, which is a bit hard for you all to see. Pop in my sesame oil. And then my sesame seeds. So I'll give it a bit of a mix for you, Sarah, and I will pop in another. Um, you can add whatever you like to this sushi rice. So I'm adding uh, capsicum tonight and some cucumbers to add a bit more crunch to it. So I'll pop all that in and I'll give it a stir and I'll come back with the finished result. Quick and easy. How easy is that? Anique has actually popped in the comments that you have made this for her before and she now wants to know what time's lunch tomorrow, Deb. Perfect, one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you'll definitely be sharing that one about, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, Lyndall, has yours come out yet? Are you ready to tip yours out? Um, yeah, I actually have pre-made it as well, Sarah, because it needs to kind of sit in the fridge. So I have it has finished. Um I can show you, but obviously it's warm, so it's kind of like a little bit runny. Um, I'll try it. It's a little bit runny, but I'm going to show you this amazing curd. So once it's set, it's like set. <laughs> um, and this is the curd. So it's really quite thick and delicious. Um, yeah, and I have made this. Not, I haven't made the berry one, but I have made lemon curd with dairy free. But this is um, this is non dairy. This has just got um, good old butter in it. But um, yeah, it's great. So it's very thick and it's quite delicious. Um, nice with that but, seed window, popped in a short crust pastry shell. Yeah, oh, and like you could do like you look Danish pastries. You could do um, little like little lemon um, berry curd uh, tart. The other thing is I saw you could actually do it in little jars and do like a lemon, you could do a raspberry and you could do a passion fruit curd or something like that and give it as a gift and that would be such a gorgeous little gift. So um, so easy, 10 minutes and most this is the season you can find lemons or limes pretty much nearly anywhere. If you can't, um, if you've got friends, grab them when you can. <laughs> Great. Lime on. Curd's another good one. Um, with limes, what I do is if I, if I get lots of limes from people, I actually just pop them in the freezer 
And then um, when I need to use them, I just pop them in the microwave to warm them. And then I just pierce it with a fork and you can squeeze the lemon um, or lime juice out, sorry. Um, if you don't, can't be bothered juicing all your limes because they're little. <laughs> so that's what I do sometimes with my limes. What were you going to say, Kaz? I was going to say, I love curds on homemade crumpets. I Yum. made crumpets for the first time on the weekend after a customer shared um, that she'd made some. So I, on my last server mix, uh, mix shop order, I got some of the, uh, this box is still here on the bench, the little crumpet rings, um, yep. and made them. And my nine-year-old said they were better than anything he's eaten from the supermarket. Yeah. Uh, and they were delicious. And I, you can also make, if you're a sourdough maker, you can actually use your discard for sourdough for um, cr discard crumpets and they're delicious as well and it's a good way to use up your discard. So, um, and you don't have to let the crumpet mixture sit for, you know, a, for a long time to let it bubble because it's already bubbled. So, yeah, that's a good sourdough tip for all those sourdough makers out there. Great idea. We've been making them for about 15 years or more. Um, egg rings. Just use an egg ring because crumpet rings weren't even a thing back back then. Oh, if they were, I didn't know about them. I just grabbed egg rings out of the drawer. Um, you can use any shape, like cookie type cutter things as well. If you've got the metal cooker cutters and things, so you can make some unusual shaped ones for the kids if that floats their boat as well. So that's definitely something. Um, while they're doing that, I'm going to make us a tasty little drink because why not? Uh, isn't that what the Thermomix is very, very good at? So I'm going to be highlighting the blend mode. So I'm making a version of a margarita, uh, but without the tequila. So I'm using Bacardi instead. So obviously you can just mix and switch out things that you have. So I am literally just putting in half a kilo of beautiful, fresh strawberries that I have hung. I have got 300 grams of ice. I have got 120 grams of lime juice. And we are going to add in 180 grams of Bacardi. So, Unless I have friends pop in, I'm going to sleep like the dead tonight. Uh, you can add sugar to this, but I'm always using fresh fruit, so I don't bother. I don't, um, I'm not really worried about adding that stuff in. So when you touch the blend mode, it automatically sets the time for 10 seconds. Uh, sorry, 30 seconds, but we only need 10 for this. So you can either dial it down so it's just set to 10, or you can just turn it on and turn it off when 10 seconds has passed. That's completely up to you. So I'm going to do a rim on our glass. So I've just got some water on a plate. And then I'm just going to dip that in a lime sugar mix that I have made. So I have literally just put lime rinds and raw sugar into the Thermomix. And I have blitzed that up. So... You can do all your beautiful salts. So if you wanted to do a citrus salt or you wanted to do a chilli salt or you wanted to do, you know, a sweeter one, like instead with the limes, lemons, oranges, then obviously you can do those as well. So whether you're using a salt or a sugar, uh, you can make those lovely rims on your glasses. So I'm just going to turn this one on. Can I jump on why that's blending, sir? So um, while that's blending, because it's super quick, I am just going to show you our caramel is done. So I am just using our little chocolate mold that we get on the pink shop to pour that in. I'll try to, sorry that I'm crooked, but that way you get to see it really well. Uh, these do set hard, so just be careful in terms of the size. I often make it in a big slab and then just chop it up. So then you can gift it off to other people. But I'll keep pouring because I'm sure says 
Blending has finished. Poured and is happily about to start drinking. Um, this obviously makes quite a lot. So if you've got well over a litre, there is definitely enough for four to six generous drinks um, to share with your friends. So depending how well you like it blended, you may want to blend it furthermore. Um, I don't. I love it just like this. So it's completely up to you with that. But that is a version of a margarita, which may or may not be in our new summer edition magazine. Make sure you look out for the launch parties. This one will be in the shops from the 7th. This isn't the recipe that's in there, but it is a slight twist on that. So definitely make sure you are out there in the shops on the 7th. Woolworths, Coles, there are Kmart have them, some news agents have them. Your consultant generally has some, so reach out to your consultant. They more than happily hook you up with them. You can order them through the mix shop as well. And if everyone here doesn't know already, we have now a rewards program. So it works like your everyday rewards does at Woolworths. So you can join the My Mix Rewards program and for every $150 you spend, you receive a $10 Mix Rewards card to add to your shopping. You also are able to spend less to get your free shipping. You receive a $15 sign-up voucher. You also receive a birthday voucher. So it's just a few of the amazing reasons why you would sign up for the My Mix Rewards program. And as you're probably well aware, your consultant's favourite place to shop is in the mix shop. Uh, we seem to have everybody keep going around, but as consultants, we also earn them. Uh, anything that comes out first, we have the opportunity to earn. So if you like earning free stuff, consider joining the team. Um, I'm going to shoot across to Kaz. Are you going to highlight a little bit of the peeling of your lovely eggs over there? Well, I have just done a test run. Um... Because I think my eggs are a little bit underdone. Um, Why you kept because, yummy gooey centres? No, well, so because my, my pantry is a little bit cold today, so rather than my pantry being on the warmer side and me going one less, um, I probably do have a little bit too soft. So it hasn't quite worked, but that's okay. Um, so there's no point showing you that. But I do want to show you, a trick with some of the cold ones that I've had in the fridge. Um, so if you are just, this is not to do with the, this is just something I've always done. Um, I last batch I did, I just popped straight in the fridge because I was heading out. So I just wanted to get them in the fridge. If you want any halves or even eggs to go in your curried eggs, cut it with a knife. It doesn't have to be a super sharp knife. Cut it in half. And then teaspoon. Scoop out your eggs. The quickest way of getting peeled eggs. Um, so, you know, those halves, beautiful in your salad, great for your potato salad. Um, one of my favourite potato salads is the Aussie potato salad, which actually cooks your potatoes and your eggs all at the same time. Um, so that's a little tip. Um, then you can whack them back in the thermi to do your curry eggs as well. Um, but yeah, just cut in half and a little teaspoon. There is your half. Perfect. But yes, um, you definitely can't peel medium soft eggs. Um, but yes, I did when I walked in the pantry earlier. I'm like, oh, it's probably a bit colder than my normal pantry temperature to do my uh, one up on my cooking. But yes, definitely can do it with the hard eggs. 12 seconds, speed three. Um, so not in um, the peeler mode, just straight 12 seconds, speed three for your peeling. And you just want enough water just to cover the blade peeler cover, um, just so that it's, so that when the eggs roll around, um, they're just rolling around in a little bit of water. Yeah. Rightio. So we might pop across to you, Jane. Have you got something on the go over there? I've got many things go on the go. One of the other bits that I love about the sugar stage is you've, 
it's got all your pre-clean built into it. So although that's a separate mode, it always has it built into your recipe for your sugar. So I've just put in 100 of a litre of water. I'm just going to throw in some vinegar. Who doesn't love the cleaning mode? It makes it so much easier to get all these dishes done and gets all that browning off there. And because it's such a smart connected machine, I don't even need to work out how long it is. It does it for me. So that's in, that's going to go and clean. These are my caramels that are setting that I've just poured out. Um, and I'm not going to tip them too much because they're very soft and you'll end up with them in a spot that's not toasty. Here are my caramels that I made earlier today. You can see just a couple of different shapes. So these are what I would call the big size, the generous size. As I said, I often line my um, tray with baking paper and often put it straight into there as well and cut up the whole slab just so you've got different sizes. If I'm doing that, I also like to sprinkle a little bit of salt on the top about five minutes after I've poured them in and you get salted caramels. As everyone said before, these are just a really easy, cheap way to do something special that you can give to everyone else and done in 25 minutes. Um, what I also love about, because I'm just on a roll with talking about things, while all this is still happening, I can still check that sensor mode. I don't need to open my oven or do anything else to check it. I'm just going to bring the arrow down on the top and just choose my sensor there. Unfortunately, because I was a little bit slack for the day, it's still telling me I've got 10 minutes. So we'll just, we'll just see how we go. I know we were supposed to finish up. So apologies, everyone, for that. Um, but as I said, your sensor and everything still goes ahead, even when you're using your thermomix mix for everything else. So that's and I did the pre-clean on my other bowl so that all my dishes are done before my dinner's cooked, which is fantastic. The other thing I would add, if you've made a batch of the caramels, if you don't necessarily want to do the pre-clean mode with the water and the vinegar, that is a built-in step because, like me, you are a greedy little person who loves caramel, pop in some milk. Head over to the kettle mode. Turn it down to 70 degrees, turn it on, and when it's finished, use the blend mode to froth it up and you have caramel hot chocolates. So that's just another way you can clean your bowl exactly. if you're using your caramels as well. I'm just going to tip this out and I will be back. So we Vera. might start Vera. Yeah. Yep. Vera, we had um, Vera just ask about when you blended your margarita, did you blend it on eight using the blend mode? I just give it the quick turn so it goes straight to the top. So you want the circle fully lit, Vera. Because you can turn the blend mode less than the full. You want to turn it with a bit of confidence to make sure it goes right around. Does that make sense? So I think the eight is all the way around. No. No, they've just, they've, they've just changed. Um, oh, have they? Actually. Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize yep. they changed it. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I just discovered that the other day. <laughs> yeah, um, had an overhaul. You might have noticed that you've had a bit of trouble lately with your cookie do. In the background, they are adding in the new spiralizer mode. So if you have one of our amazing cutters, which is a host reward that you can use to slice or grate your ingredients, uh, it's a limited time host reward till the end of December. But there is in the coming new year a spiralizer attachment. So if you like to do those potatoes on a stick and cook them in your air fryer, or if you like to do your zoodles to have like zucchini or carrot noodles and things like that instead of pasta, uh, that is something that will be coming out in the new year. If, like us, you don't like to wait to get your hands on things, join the team because it is something you can earn when you're a consultant. So you get it early. So that's another little uh, sneaky thing there as well. But because of the updates going on in the background, we have had some issues with some accounts not accessing their cookie do. It's a minor thing. You can still manually use your thermics to cook absolutely everything if you've been one of the rare people who've been affected. Um, and your cookie do app has been working perfectly fine in the background. So you can still just tell your thermomix what to do. That's the beauty of being able to use it manually or using our guided cooking or using our created recipes and the modes and things like that. So the Thermomix is very uh, intuitive in that aspect. And so you can just keep rocking along. 
And so, Sarah, Sarah, I actually got an email this afternoon to say they've actually fixed that um, issue from you do. Better. So it didn't yeah. even last 48 hours and we're all fixed. Yeah, so the, they're on to it straight away and they should be able to log in to Cookie Do without any issues. So fabulous. So, Madeline, who's got some amazing looking bread rolls to show us? What do you got going on over there? Oh, just get you to unmute, Madeline. There we go. So that's the lot that I just made and they're already rising. So I'll be putting them in the oven tonight. These ones I made this morning. So I stayed true to the recipe and made the long ones. And I've just heated one and put some butter that I made in my Thermomix and some apricot jam that I made in my Thermomix on top. So I'm ready to eat those because I haven't more tea yet. <laughs> Madeline, do they freeze okay? They do. Yep. And I take them out of the freezer you know, about half an hour before I need them. Sometimes I might just zap it for about 10 seconds just to soften up a little bit more, but usually they're beautiful straight out of the freight as soon as they've thawed out. Yeah, and they make them actually nice as rye bread if you want to make them half white, half rye. Sometimes I do that too because I like a light rye roll as well. Do you just fill your rye in there, Madeline, first, or do you just do a half batch and a half batch? Half and half, of, yeah, because I've already got some rye that I've milled already so um, I've got that in the container and then I'll just mix half of that and half of what I've got two big bins for all my flowers because I make a lot of bread we will also make sure we send you out an email we don't normally send an email after the zoom classes these days because we are so good at putting the links in but there's something not going on with my zoom tonight and the links aren't popping in properly so I will make sure that we send you through the recipe is in a link with an email tomorrow um, once I get that all up and running. So we'll make sure that you've got all these recipes and then you can happily cook away with that. So what else do we have? Well, Jane's showing you her lovely caramels. Madeline's showing you her lovely bread. Deborah, do you have your lovely sushi salad there? I have just popped it some in a bowl. But it has much filled my thermo server which is here too apart from the bit that I've taken out for the bowl just so you can see it better it's pretty much filled it to the brim so it's beautiful and colorful it's got lots of different like it's got two I actually use orange and red capsicum it's got some avocado in there I folded through the nori sheets at the end topped it with some sesame seeds and some spring onions so I can't oh to eat that quick easy and delicious and fresh and to make a 2.2 or 2.6 litre thermo serve of uh deliciousness is it any wonder everyone is circling around you come lunchtime deb <laughs> no <laughs> and two hungry teenagers it'll feed as well i think that sounds about right uh lindell how many jars of curd does that recipe make out of curiosity for that size that you've got there um, uh, it makes um, 700 grams. Um, I did a half serve, so that, you know, 350. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely get a decent whack out of that. So a lot of the jars yeah. I use for yogurt are 300 grams. If you're doing the big ones, if you were just doing little mini pots, you could quite yeah. easily get five or six out of that. Yeah. And you could probably even, yeah, like with a thickened recipe, you can double it even again, I think, because I do that with my lemon curd and it works fine. You just have to cook it a bit longer. And the great thing about the thicken too is that it works that out for you based on what's in there. So you don't really need to think too much about that. You just whack it in. There is also the scaled recipes within Cookie Do. So if one of the recipes is scaled, then it will automatically give you either larger or smaller portions of what the standard sort of recipe is. So you can search by scaled recipes as well. There's roughly 200 in your Cookie Do account that uh, have already been built in to work either up or down with the recipe numbers as well. So there's that with your cookie do, which has lots of tips and hints within it. Uh, Kaz, got any of those oh. boiled eggs to have a look at that deliciousness? I do. So these ones are on this side. These are my harder ones that I did the other day. Uh, but then today's ones are a little bit more gooey, but they would be perfect on, you know, just cracked on some toast 
uh, with that nice gooey centre as well. Caesar so. salad. Yum. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear my little buzzer go, everyone? Woohoo! Chicken is <laughs> done. Ready to get out of that oven. It obviously needs to rest, so, but I am going to try to hold it up so you can see it before I let it sit and rest, okay? Fingers crossed. Let's go. Oh, let's pray poor old Jane doesn't tip this on her feet. Hope she's got some shoes on. <laughs> While Jane's grabbing that, uh, I thought I'd add something extra about the sensor. Um, so uh, Thermomix have a cooking centre app on your phone, which you can actually control the sensor if you're away from your Thermomix. So you can use it. Okay. Sorry, oh. No, you're no, right. I'm, I'm going to change the camera angle first. Now, if only I had my phone up here, I could show you because I'm actually using my phone as a Zoom. Um, but with that, um, as long as you are within Bluetooth range of your probe, you can be out in the garden. I've been out cleaning my car while my probe has been in a cake in the in the house. Um, and rather than having to go back into the thermics all the time to see when it's ready, my phone in my pocket will then make that same sort of sound telling me it's ready. If you have that little look, Sarah's showing it. It's the green one that looks like a little house with a thermomix yes. blaze in the middle. So now that is the chicken one. cooked. And I'm going to stop holding it up because it's still hot. <laughs> and as I said, it's now telling me that it needs to rest. Which is lovely. Obviously, the probe is hot. So when you need to take it out, take it out with your gloves and then it, it's really easy it just washes off um, and wipe it back put it back into your case which is also charging it so it charges it for you when you're not using it and it's even got some magnets on the back so really easy to stick up in your kitchen so that you don't lose it anywhere and as I said that just either tells you on the app or connects straight through to your TMPix and your TMPo. Mine's connected to the range hood just there in the background so Really easy, oh, yep. this magnet on. Uh, so they're always handy and in the kitchen. But like Kaz was saying, they're really handy because you could be out hanging out the washing, just have your phone in your back pocket and it will still give you the alert. So it's one of those amazing things that you can either use independently of your Thermomix or if the recipe you're using is built in, then it's also there and connected to your Thermomix going in the background as well. So it could just be you've popped a leg of lamb in the oven and you're just using the Cooking Centre app. So um, very versatile from that perspective. So hopefully you've picked up some tips and hints on all of the TM6 modes, and we haven't even scratched the surface. There are obviously sous vide modes, there is fermentation. Uh, there is lots of different other modes within your Thermomix. So we have some other recordings uh, in our YouTube channel. Um, so when you get the link to this one, if you wanted to go back and look at those past ones, you can definitely do that. You will find them all there in together. Um, but hopefully if the recording works, you will find this on YouTube later and we'll send out a copy of the recording when we're sending out the recipes for you. So thank you very much to Kaz, Lyndall, Jane, Deb, Madeline. Thank you all everyone for coming along and interacting with us. It's always lovely to see lots of new faces pop up. We like hearing what you're using your Thermomix for. Reach out to your consultant if you have any ideas for future classes. We're generally running a Zoom one every month. If you want to know more about your Cookie Do subscription and how to get better value out of that, because obviously we've mentioned a few times today, you might be connected to Woolworths. So, you know, your shopping list can go to Woolies and you can order click and collect or home delivery with your groceries because Woolworths are fabulous that way and they're paired with the Thermomix and the Cookie Do. You want to know more about that? We generally have two sessions of that free a month on Zoom as well. So you can come on down. We don't do any cooking. We literally share our Cookie Do screen and we take you through all the different aspects of Cookie Do. So if that's something that you would like to know more about, Follow us on Eventbrite and you will get the notifications for that as well. So otherwise, thank you everyone for coming along to Team Elevate's Modes class this evening and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much for coming. I did see 